Are you interested in retrieving data from the Firestore database in a way that's both faster and more cost effective? If so, you're watching the right video. Today I'm going to show you how to use Firebase Cloud Functions to automatically aggregate or add up information from a subcollection and then write it to its parent document. Take for example a post document that has a comment subcollection nested under it. Whenever a new comment is created, it's going to trigger a cloud function that will read this comment subcollection, then add up the comment count and the five most recent comments, and then duplicate them on the post document. On a NoSQL document database like Firestore, duplication is perfectly acceptable. Imagine if we had a post with 100 comments. We'd have to read all those comments to get the total every time someone viewed a post. Not only is that slower for the end user, but it's also going to cost a lot more money as your app scales up. My goal today is to show you how to solve this problem using backend data aggregation. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe, and you can grab the full source code from angularfirebase.com. I'm going to be starting from a brand new Angular app, so run ng-new. Its only dependency is Angular Fire 2, and you can follow the setup instructions for that on the main repo. If you're not using Angular, you can skip ahead to the cloud function code, which is just written in plain JavaScript. The first thing I'll show you is our underlying data. We have a post collection and then this test post under it. Then you can see we have a recent comments array here, which is the five most recent comments from potentially hundreds or even thousands of comments in the sub collection. Having this data on the parent doc is extremely useful if you loop through a list of posts and you just want to show a quick preview of the most recent comment as well as the total comment count. The comment sub collection is very simple. It just has a content property and a created at timestamp. At this point, I want to point out that this is not suitable for every situation. It's ideal when you have documents that receive many reads, but not very many writes. A good example would be Yelp, where many users want to see the reviews for a location, but only a small percentage actually write a review. Getting back to Angular, you're going to need to run Firebase init functions if you're in a new project. And then we're not going to install anything special, we can just use the default packages, but make sure they're updated to the newest version because Firestore is a relatively new product. We'll write this cloud function in a few minutes, let's first make the query without any data aggregation. I'm switching over to the app component, and then I'm going to import observable from RxJS as well as Angular Firestore. Then I can go ahead and inject Angular Firestore in the constructor. From there, I'll declare a variable for our post reference, which is an Angular Firestore document, and then we'll set another variable for the observable. And we'll do the exact same thing here for the comments, but it'll be an Angular Firestore collection. Then we'll add one more variable for form value, which we'll get from the form input in the HTML. During ng on init, we'll first make a reference to the document that we want, which in this case is just called test post. And then we can make a reference to its comment subcollection by calling collection on that reference. So we say postref collection comments. And it's also important that we order by something. In this case, we have a timestamp on the comments. So we'll say order by created at and make that descending. Then to actually retrieve our post, we call postref value changes, and that returns it as an observable. Then we can do the exact same thing for comments. Then we're going to switch over to the HTML and we'll set a template variable for our post. So we unwrap that with the async pipe and then say as post. And then from there, we'll just display the post title and the post content. Then we'll go ahead and set up a form input here and bind it with ng model. Then when the user hits the enter key, we'll go ahead and run a function to update that in the database. Right now we have a comments observable. So we'll go ahead and loop over that with the async pipe. But after we perform some data aggregation, we'll be able to read this information directly from the post document. So at this point, we have our blog post here, and then the user can enter their comment, and it's updated in real time. The problem here is we're reading multiple documents when we could only just read one, and we also don't have an efficient way to keep track of a comment count or any other aggregate data. So let's go ahead and solve this by writing a cloud function. We're going to import the admin database and make sure that's initialized. Then we're going to run the function whenever a new comment document is written to the database. So we do that by saying functions firestore document, then point it to the comment ID nested under the post. Using onWrite, we'll run this function whenever a document is created, updated, or deleted. First, we'll set a couple variables here for the comment ID and the post ID. So we do that by calling event params with the corresponding ID. 
then after we have those IDs, we'll set up a reference to the post document. We're going to do that with the admin database, which will allow us to bypass any Firestore rules that we have set up. Then from there, we need to query the collection of comments that are nested under this document so we can add them up and aggregate them. In a cloud function, we're using the main Firebase SDK as opposed to Angular Fire 2. So we do things slightly different. Instead of calling value changes, we call get. That returns a promise with the query snapshot. The query snapshot contains all of the documents that we need, and it behaves kind of like an array, but you can't use the regular JavaScript prototype array methods on it. To get the size of the collection, we can call query snapshot size. And then to get all of the recent comments, we'll set up an array here. Then we can loop over the snapshots with the for each method. And for each comment, we're going to push it to our array. At this point, you have an array of data that you could perform any kind of data aggregation task that you want. But for now, we're just going to splice the last five comments. And we'll also set a property for the last activity, which would be the last time any user has placed a comment on this post. And then finally, we add all of this data to an object. Then we can call update on our document reference. Then we'll also go ahead and console log errors here. But overall, it's a pretty simple cloud function. I'd like to point out that if you're doing multiple updates in this function, you'd want to wrap it in either a transaction or do them all in a single batch. That will ensure all your aggregate data stays in sync and is updated atomically. The final step is to deploy this function to Firebase. So we just run Firebase deploy only functions. Now let's modify our Angular app to take advantage of this function. Back in the app component, first notice that I've removed the comments observable from ng on init. Instead, we're going to lazy load it only when necessary. Then users can actually still add a comment without even loading the comments collection. Because we have the comments ref, we can just call add and pass it some data. We're going to show the user the first five comments, which will be on the document. If the user wants to load more, we'll give them a button to click, which will lazily populate the comments observable. In Angular Fire 2, the actual data isn't read until you call value changes. Now we just need to make some changes to our app component HTML to show the aggregate data. So first up here, we'll show the total comment count, as well as the timestamp on the last activity. Then we'll set up another for loop because now we have an array on the document itself, but we only want to show this if the comments observable isn't populated. So we can just do ngif no comments observable, then we'll go ahead and show the five most recent comments. This data is already unwrapped by the post observable, so we can just call post recent comments and we don't need to use the async pipe. And then we'll just go ahead and display the same exact data. If the user decides they want to load all of the comments, then we'll give them a button down here to do so. So we'll just say click and then run our load more event handler and we can show them how many comments are on this post. In the app itself, take a look at the total comments, which is currently 11. Then if we go ahead and add another comment, you'll see it gets updated down there in the feed and the total comments is updated to 12 with about maybe a second or so of latency. The latency is a little bit higher, but that is one of the trade-offs when you're doing aggregation. So here we're looking at the post document in Firestore and you can see it's updated each time we add a new comment. If 99% of your users read the blog post but don't leave a comment, this is going to vastly reduce the number of reads that you execute in Firestore. Not only is that going to save you money as you gain more users, but it's also going to make your app much more performant. That's it for data aggregation with Firestore. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want twice as much content every week, consider becoming a pro subscriber at angularfirebase.com. You'll get a free copy of my book, as well as an extra video every week. And I even provide one-on-one -on -one support via our Slack team. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.